Hello everyone, uh, welcome to using GDB on the kernel. This is the third part of my debugging the kernel series. Uh, this video should be pretty short because uh, doing this work is a whole lot e easier than one would assume. So the agenda for this video is to run the QAMU kernel that we have previously made in part one of debugging the kernel. And we're going to, um, in our running script, um, we're going to set um, that we're going to do debugging and we're going to set that we want to halt right at the start of, of running the, uh, the QMU. In another terminal, we're going to attach via, uh, via GDB to Q QEMU and then we're going to um, hopefully uh, hit the bug that we found in, a, in uh, part two, uh, the bug that we found using, using size caller um, and hit that bug and, and see what we get out of GDB at the, um, when we do that. So there's no more slides here. This is, a, this is gonna be a pretty quick video here. Um, so let us run the uh, run our run script and we're gonna make sure that we are giving it um, the, the compiled kernel that we made. We're going to say that we get, and that's the, the dash K option. And then the FD option is the Fedora desktop information. So it passes in the init RD that we need and it passes in the command line um, information to grab the root file system properly. And then we're also going to pass in that we're going to do debugging and that we want to break um, right at the start. So B and D. And we also want to put in N here because N allows us to uh, not have a, uh, a display so we don't pop up a QEMU Q -E window here that we don't need. So I'm going to start that up and you'll notice that nothing goes here. It just spritz out the, the actual real QEMU command um, that uh, we could have typed by hand. But the reason I don't like typing, the reason I use this run script is because I don't want to type all of this stuff uh, by hand every time I want to do a, a QEMU system. So the important things here that you'll find are just these two things, these two options, which are to do the, the, the debugging and the break right at the start. And because we've broken right at the start, that's why we're not progressing um, into the kernel. So we're going to attach ourselves into the kernel via GDB. So because, uh, um, well, the way that we do that is we GDB into the VM Linux of the kernel that we've built. So we just hit enter here and then we target remote colon one, two, three, four. And we are now on that kernel. Um, now, just for demonstration purposes, um, let's say we wanted to start stepping through the kernel right from the start. What we would do is do a hardware break on start underscore kernel. And then we would hit C for continue. And now we are at that spot. We are at our first breakpoint start kernel in init main dot C. And we can bring up the, uh, the TUI um, and look around the source code here. We can get ourselves a backtrace. So this shows us that uh, start kernel is in fact the first C function that is called when the kernel starts up. It is called by secondary startup 64, which is in one of the assembly files, head underscore 64.s. Um, so start kernel is the first C function that's called. Now we can start stepping through things. Um, now, not everything is going to have source code available to us, and I'm not quite sure why that is, but that's the reality of it. We can step into functions. And you can debug almost as if you are on, um, almost as if you're debugging um, user space code. Now, I believe there's a limit to the amount of hardware breakpoints that you can have. I'm not sure what that limit is. It may be three, I'm not sure. But you have a limit on those hardware breaks. 
Um, so it's not exactly the easiest, as easy as um, debugging a user space program. But it's getting right up there. Um, we can, uh, let's see if we can print out what that Linux banner is. So print Linux banner. So we can print out variables. Uh, we can do lots of stuff. But what we want to do right now is we just want to continue because we want to start, we want to uh, see what happens when we cause that kernel panic. And I'm going to get my... There we go. Once we're up and running, then I can copy our crashing application that we discovered um, in part two of debugging the kernel, the, the size caller uh, work that we did in the previous episode. Oh, we probably need to get into the correct directory. All right. Now let's use that crash application to crash the kernel and see what happens with GDB here. So crash. Now nothing's happening here. So it's not exactly the same um, as uh, debugging a user space program because when you when you cause uh, like a seg fault in a user space program, um, your GDB will halt at where that crash is and you will be able to do a backtrace and things like that on uh, on that crash so that you can debug that way. Um, with this way, uh, the kernel panic luckily tells us where we crashed. It tells us that we crashed on fixed up bad IRAT. Um, in the previous video, we discovered that the, the, um, the fix up bad IRAT uh, where was the size killer crash log crashes? Not that. The log, please. This log told us that the fix up band IRET was called by. Oh, I thought I thought it told us that it was a. Uh, Entry entry sixty four dot s. Oh, maybe I'm maybe I'm taking crazy pills here. Here we are. Uh, it told us um, that it was entry sixty four dot s that was it, um, before that that was leading up to the fix up by at IRET, uh, but. Um, let's just prove that out by setting a breakpoint on fix up bad IRET. So we're going to have to yeah that's that's not where we are. And we're gonna have to set the hardware break for that function. And then let's see if we can restart from GDB. I'm not sure if we can. No, remote does not does not give us that. So uh, we're gonna have to restart our QEMU system, then target remote one, two, three, four again. And we want to hardware break on fix up bad IRET. Uh, okay. Let's do this again. Target remote one two three four. Hardware break on. Fix up bad IRET and continue, please. So hopefully this fix up bad IRET isn't called before we actually uh, get to the crash. Um, we shall see. Right, we're 
at the command prompt. Let's upload that crash just to make sure that it's the proper one on the file system. And I'm going to sync so that I have that synced, so that it was written to disk. Now let's run the crash application, and we should hit um, fix up bad IRET because we've put a break on it. And we are at fix up bad IRET. We can start looking at the source code for it. We can do a backtrace. Now I'm assuming that this is the, the fix up bad IRET that if I hit N here, it would cause a crash. Now I'm not totally sure of that, but I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Uh, so we get that um, fix up bad IRET was called by error entry on entry underscore 64.s, just like we learned um, from size killer, uh, the size caller. Uh, but we also learned that that function was called by something to do with IDT entry, um, the ASM EXC general protection. So let's open up this file and see what we can learn there. And it's on line 559. So go to line 559. And we've got a macro here doing some things. What does the macro do? The macro makes a function that takes registers. So I wonder if we have uh, print regs here. No regs in current view. Print. Uh, S uh, print resolve S. So we've got this bad IRAT stack so I was debugging here but we've passed into entry and then we've passed into traps that's why we have this bad IRET stack. Um, so uh, I hope I've given you enough information on how you can start debugging the kernel yourself. Um, if I start debugging this, then we, um, we're going to get on to uh, something a little bit separate than what I wanted to show you. And uh, my knowledge base isn't such that I can actually make progress on this issue. Um, I find this quite interesting. I want to see what this bad IRET stack structure looks like, uh, but that's outside of the scope of the video. So um, I hope that um, this video has shown you that using GDB on the kernel is a very simple process. Um, it's not quite as easy as using GDB on a user space program, but it is pre it, it is much easier than one would assume. Um, as you saw, I was up and running within you know like three minutes. It was it was very simple. Um, so yeah, I hope you have learned something about Linux today, something about GDB and uh, using GDB on the kernel. Um, and I wish you a good evening, a good afternoon, or a good day. Thank you very much.